Yes, this particular Torah was written in the mid 1700s. Oh. And it came from Vilia, Lithuania. All it's right. It's well docu documented, and it is magnificent Hebrew writing, and it's it's just a magnificent scroll. And I have it open to Genesis 1:1, the creation yes. account. Right here. And each of these these breaks are the days. This is the, in the beginning. God created the heaven and the earth, and day one. And then this would be day two, and day three, and day four is where God created the planets and, yes. and everything that's in the sky for us to uh, see. He, he created a, a greater light to rule the day, the sun, the lesser light to rule the night, the moon, with its impact on the canopy above the earth. And uh, he created the stars also. Yes. And the statement is made right there in paragraph four. Gary, what is so amazing to me, and I think it was Professor John Hefner who pointed this out some time ago on this program, just with a sweep of his hand, the scripture says, and he created the stars also. Yes. Now, we think we know the reason for this progression. The center of God's attention and the first body in space that God created was planet Earth as a sphere of water. Mm -hmm. And in the process of that first week of creation, literal week of creation, on day one he created, of course, the, the uh, mass of water, the sphere of water, without form and void. Day two, the canopy above it. Day three, the dry land, the terraforma. And then on day four, he created these planets, which would affect us in our biorhythms. We're not to worship the planets. They don't determine our character. But the moon, which uh, orbits our planet Earth, is absolutely and pervasively necessary to provide the cleansing of the oceans, even the tides within the human body are affected by the moon, but that's not all. As the greater light shines, the sun, reflected by the moon with its anorthosite, which is that reflective material, while that is occurring, it actually, originally, before it was fractured, affected the repair system of the DNA that in time would biodegrade. So God did all of that on day number four. And he made the stars also. Just almost like an afterthought. Uh, or just yes. sweep of a hand. Yes. And yes. those affect us as well yes. with gravitational benefit of those 225 billion galaxies, each comprised of over half a billion stars, 10 to the 25th power of stars. But it's within our solar system that we are uh, have brought our greatest attention today because all of these beautiful meteorites that you have brought for our consideration have primarily come from the asteroid belt. Some secondary, as we mentioned a moment ago, the glancing blow to the moon and Mars and uh, throwing this material up that ultimately landed here, primarily comprised of iron and nickel and silicates, but then we're going to talk about some glass involved in this process. Now, between Mars and Jupiter, there's an asteroid belt. Most of these came from that asteroid belt. And it appears, many astronomers believe, that there was another planet. And that this planet was in that particular orbit because there is a ratio of distance from the sun that each of our planets demonstrate. And this one at the time of the flood, Psalm 77 states that a great noise went out into the heavens at the time of the flood. And in Psalm 77, the energy, the microwave energy, which disrupted the internal structure of planet Earth, would also affect another planet about this size and of the same basic composition. Having said all of that, are you still with me? Yes. Having said all of that, these minerals, elements, metals inside these meteorites are of the same basic composition, however, with a greater concentration the same basic composition of the heavy metals on planet Earth. So, at the time of the flood, that incredible disruption apparently took place. 
in this area, and this is the result. And before the program is over, we're going to talk about mountains falling in. Now, this is your collection that you've shared with us. Tell us about it, please. Well, starting on this end here, a very famous uh, meteorite uh, the crater is in Arizona. It's called yes. Canyon Diablo. Canyon Diablo. I've been there. I've gone down into it. And uh, actually, they say most of the, the mass of the meteorite is still there. Yes. But, but there's quite a bit of fragments uh, that have strewn across the desert floor. And these are fragments. Uh, this, is, this is called uh, a shrapnel. Uh, the shrapnel, when a uh, large meteorite comes in the atmosphere, parts of it will actually explode like a bomb because of the pressure, yes. the friction. Yes. And, and this would be shrapnel from that. Very heavy with its iron-nickel content. Certainly looks like shrapnel in the discharge. Yes. This is a second piece that uh, we had cut, and it shows the, the various lines that are always uh, uh, predominant in an iron meteorite. A uh, very small piece from Canyon Diablo. Moving on to this section here, in 1947, there was a an explosion in the uh, eastern part of Russia uh, and it's in the Sokotia Alien region. It's a mountain region, very nice lush forest region and uh, the Russians actually thought an atomic bomb had yes. gone off. Yes. And actually it was a meteorite had, had hit, a very large meteorite. And it the devastated forests, oh, yes. dried up lakes with the impact. Yeah. Yes, and you have some of the shrapnel from yes. that meteorite. Actually this, this is a piece of shrapnel it would be like part of a, a great bomb that, uh, that would be made out of iron. It's just twisted metal, uh, iron and nickel. And then the pieces that don't actually become shrapnel uh, contain these little thumbprints of, of the melting process that goes on. And that's so, the very well-defined yes. uh, uh, part of a meteorite from the uh, Sokotia Alien region of Russia. Dramatic, dramatic. I was just a young boy when that happened and I, I, I remember the news announcing it and they thought we had detonated or someone had detonated an atomic bomb yes. uh, and, and it was a very tenuous time. The fact that you have these meteorites is stunning. Take us further please. Well this piece came out of Australia. It's called a Mundabrilla and it is also iron and nickel. So what you're really saying is that these impacts are global in nature, oh, not yeah. just in one trajectory margin. Yes, uh, quite a few meteorites are coming from Australia and, and then, of course, uh, the Campo de Cielo area, uh, the Sahara Desert area, uh, the Antarctica, um, and actually some from America. Oh, we, yes. I have a piece here from America. Actually, I just got this one in today, actually yesterday, and it is uh, called the Odessa meteorite. Not Odessa, uh, Russia, Odessa, Texas. Odessa, Texas. Well, yes. uh, I knew Texas wouldn't be left out. <laughs> yes. And it is also iron and, and nickel, and it does contain uh, uh, some stony uh, particles. Yes. Also, it's not quite as pure as these, these others. Well, Texans aren't always as pure as they <laughs> should be. <laughs> Pardon me to my fellow Texans. I love Texas. Something happened in the Sahara Desert. Uh, quite a while back, and uh, the scientific community says that some some large impact uh, actually brought up the desert sand and melted the sand, turning yes. it to glass. Yes. And this is a piece of the what's called the Sahara, uh, actually no, the Libyan desert glass. The Libyan desert glass. This, of course, uh, a silicate. It is not heavy like the other materials, but they have a scenario, and I think they're probably right. The impact would literally vaporize or discharge some of the silica and in a very rapid process it would cool and turn to glass yes. in its crystalline form. In so, the um, excavation in, uh, in Egypt when they opened King Tut's tomb uh, one of the, the decorative uh, shields that he had around, his, uh, around his, his chest has a piece of this Libyan desert glass uh, that in, is embedded most in that. intriguing. Yeah very intriguing so they recognize the benefit of it and the beauty of it even in King Tutankhamon's yes. test. Mm -hmm. I've seen that vest. I don't own it, I've seen it. Now this piece here is, is called the uh, Taza. It is also iron. It came out of north, uh, northwest Africa. Quite heavy. Yes. 
with uh, considerable nickel as well from the shiny portions there.